So what do you guys think my first ever Final Fantasy game was? I guess technically you could say it was Super Mario RPG, best Final Fantasy. <laughs> but no, the first ever Final Fantasy game that I played was, well, what you're seeing right here. This is the first game that I've ever played to have the Final Fantasy branding on it, and it's not even mainline Final Fantasy. It's instead this weird Mario Kart cross with Final Fantasy thing. <laughs> Okay, in all honesty, Chocobo Racing might be a really weird game, but I still kind of have a soft spot for it. I heard that they actually had a new version coming out on the Switch, and then I started hearing a bunch of bad things about Chocobo GP on the Switch, or whatever it's called. Uh, so I decided, hey, I could go back and play the original and see if that still holds up after so long. And uh, it's certainly a PlayStation Racer, and it's certainly a Mario Kart clone. But it still has its charm from back in the day. I mean, this is the only game I can think of where a magic carpet is a viable vehicle for racing with. Ah, don't you remember when clouds and magic carpets were able to be raced back in the day? I mean, they technically could just fly over the finish line over and over, but they're not doing it in this game. White Mage doesn't even have her magic carpet in Chocobo GP, and I hated that as soon as I found out. So yes, Chocobo Racing for the PlayStation 1. I'm gonna go through the story mode, because apparently racers need a story mode these days. I mean, F-Zero GX had a story mode, and it was completely weird and crazy. Uh, this game, not so crazy on the story, but I don't need to show you any of the scenes, look them up on YouTube, or even play the game yourself. So, let's get started. So one thing that sets Chocobo Racing apart from Mario Kart is that every character in the game has their own unique special ability. Well, I say unique. You're actually allowed to mix and match the characters and their abilities. So even though I'm playing as Chocobo, I don't necessarily have to choose the dash ability, which is his ability. Uh, computer racers always match the character with their own abilities. This first track, by the way, it's just a basic test track to get you um, used to the gameplay. Uh, it has the tutorial in the story, even though this isn't likely to be the first game mode you actually pick. I think people might actually just choose Time Trial if they wanted to get used to the courses and the gameplay. Anyways, there's not much to say about it, but you can cut corners more if you dash over the areas of the track where you would normally be slowed down, such as the grass. So, like, if I had dashed here, I could cut off a little bit more of the track and race the course more efficiently. Um, your time for this track, even though you're racing alone, your time actually does matter, because at the end of any given story mode run, you're actually given a score based on how well you did. I've never seen anyone get a perfect 100 out of 100. The maximum potential score is 100. I've never seen anybody do that, and I would be very impressed if somebody did do that. Apparently, there's a minimum time you're supposed to uh, reach. You're supposed to finish in under a certain time in order to get the maximum points for that course, but um, I did a run where I got under the alleged minimum time you need, and I still didn't get 100 points. Maybe it's because restarting or losing a race causes you to lose points. I don't really know for sure. So at any rate, we're moving on to the second course. And in the second course, like all of the music in this game is, of course, rearranged from classic Final Fantasy titles. For that first track, you had the classic Chocobo theme. This course actually has a unique theme. It hasn't really been heard in any Final Fantasy game. I have heard that apparently this course's theme is a remix of an unused town theme for Final Fantasy VI, but I do not remember where I read that or if it's even close to being true. I don't know. So another unique thing this game does is that um, now we're getting into the courses where you have actual items that you can use. So this first course has just the haste spell. Uh, the items are all spells that are shown in these magic stones that you pick up and collect. And you can actually increase the magnitude of whatever spell you cast by picking up multiple stones before using them. So in order to get the maximum boost from the haste spell, you can pick up three haste stones and then use them all at once. But you gotta be careful because, as you can see, the stone is following behind me wherever I go. So another opponent could actually get behind me and then swipe the stone by bumping into me. So you can steal your opponent's magic stones, which is really interesting. 
But uh, this course is very, very easy as you just have to use your dash ability and all of the magic stones. Your opponent in this course is Mog the Moogle, who has shown up in a couple of games. Mog just has the ability to fly as their ability. So, like, he just flaps above the ground. I don't know if it's a he or a she. I always think Moogles are girls for some reason. But, yeah, that was really easy to beat, and Mog never catches up to you, because all he can do is flap above the ground for a little bit, which avoids traps such as the Blizzard spell, which we'll see in a couple of courses. However, characters like White Mage and Black Mage, they... They are able to fly naturally, so they don't need the flap ability to do that. So, uh, it's like they completely obsoleted Mog as a character. I don't know if Mog's driving capabilities are any better. Anyways, Course 3 is up next, and we're racing against a golem. Not the not the iconic monster that I would have chosen, but a golem, I guess... I guess there have been golems in Final Fantasy, but I can't really think of any off the top of my head that are noteworthy. Anyways... Uh, this track's music is a remix of the Final Fantasy III boss theme. It is changed a little bit from the original melody, but you can recognize a couple of sections from the music if you look up the OST, and please look up the OST. I actually jam out to this OST very often. <laughs> well, not very, very often. There's hundreds of songs out there I can listen to now, but still. Good, good OST. Anyways, the magic stone that we're introduced to is the Fire Spell. It is basically a Koopa Shell from Mario Kart. Well, not exactly, because uh, a regular fire spell will just go until it hits a wall and then it's gone. Um, if you collect two fire stones and use them at once, it's like a red shell. And if you collect three fire spells and use them all at once, it's like a blue shell. Well, not exactly like a blue shell, but it does crash into everybody that's in front of you and cause them to spin out for a little while. Uh, Golem's ability is also just, at, just about as useful as Mog's. All it does is increase his grip. It lets him turn better. And I don't really see the use for that. I don't see that being useful at all. I mean, I think I use dash in just about every stage. In fact, I, I did use dash in every stage because... Like, there just aren't a lot of good abilities besides a speed boost. A speed boost is always good no matter what. The other ones are kind of... Eh. There are a couple that I think you could use in multiplayer, though. So, go for that if you want. Next up is the uh, stage where we race against a goblin. Yes, a generic goblin. Again, not exactly the most iconic monster. I think you fight goblins at the beginning of Final Fantasy 1, I, I guess. And they're in most of the games. But here we go. A, a race against a goblin in a minecart. And he actually has an ability that lets him steal a magic stone from a random opponent. So he, he is actually the bane of speedrunners because uh, he can steal your haste spells that you work so hard to hold on to. And this stage, you probably recognize the music from this stage already. Oh, yeah, my magic stone just got stolen, and I was pretty annoyed by that. But luckily, there's a shortcut you can use that the computer never, ever uses for some reason. So the music for this stage is the very, very iconic, um, what was it called? Gurugu Volcano or something? The, the volcano from Final Fantasy 1. It also got remixed in Final Fantasy 9. So, very nice tune, in fact. I really like it a lot. And the magic stone for this stage is the Blizzard Spell, which is basically your Mario Kart banana peels. Uh, using one Blizzard Spell will drop a single puddle of ice that your enemies can run over. And if you collect two ice stones and use them at once, it will make a bunch of puddles of ice behind you. And collecting three Blizzard Spells at once and using them all at once will cause everybody else to spin out. It's basically like uh, blowing up everybody, like the lightning item from Mario Kart, I suppose. And since we're getting a bunch of different magic stones now, every stage so far has introduced a new magic stone, and that can be a problem because if you're going for the haste stone specifically, now you have to hope that you pick them up randomly. I mean, sometimes sometimes you, you surely have noticed by now that you can see which stone you're picking up, but the stones with a question mark, they could be anything. Anyways, that's four stages dealt with, and for the rest of the story mode, I'm actually going to play as Goblin in particular, because, as I mentioned, Goblin can steal your magic stones, so I do not want the computer to play as Goblin, and then... Oh, I'm using Chocobo instead? No, I'm using Goblin. Okay. <laughs> Forgot what I selected for a moment there. So, yeah, the computer opponents, besides the new character that gets introduced, uh, the computer opponents are all randomized after a certain point. So by playing as Goblin, I remove the possibility of a computer playing as Goblin and using the Mug ability to steal Magic Stones. 
Uh, this stage is pretty nice. It has the uh, magic, uh, what was it called? The Mage Tower theme from Final Fantasy II. It's a really great tune. And I'm surprised some of these older tracks don't get remixed more often. I mean, it's nice to hear new music, of course, but some of the music from the old days is really, really good. And I like that it got remixed in Chocobo Racing, at least. Our opponent for the stage is Black Mage, who is the first of two, actually three opponents, to have a, a vehicle that basically lets them fly over any blizzard spells you send out. Of course, Mog has that as an ability, but uh, that's not useful at all compared to the dash ability. So the magic stone that got introduced into this stage is the thunder spell. Using it once will cause a single bolt of lightning to appear on the guy in front of you. Uh, if you use two of them at once, there will be three lightning bolts, so it's harder to dash around. And three at once causes everyone to get struck by unavoidable lightning. Yeah, you can see that there's going to be a theme with the level three magic spells just uh, zapping everybody at once. So you gotta be careful when you're cutting the corner on this part of the track, otherwise you will fall into lava. Yeah, you don't instantly die, thank goodness, but you do have to wait a moment for Sid to repair your vehicle and get you back on the road. Yeah, Sid is in this game too. Other than story mode, he only appears when he is fixing up your vehicle. So it's nice to get a Sid in this story as well. Uh, you can see that I was able to avoid the lightning magic there because I was going so fast that it the lightning fixates on what, a spot that it thinks you're going to be at and that it zaps that spot. So if you're going fast enough, it's very easy to avoid the lightning. It's kind of difficult to react to the spell because you only have like a very brief moment to do something before you're hit. Like you have to react to it very quickly. All right, so with that course out of the way, uh, next up we're going to a course that I don't exactly like that much. From here on out, there's going to be some very annoying magic spells introduced. So next up, uh, we have a race against White Mage, and White Mage, uh, she's actually known as Shiro in some of the other Chocobo games. So Chocobo Racing kind of kickstarted this entire Chocobo story universe thing where, compared to Final Fantasy, it's much more lighthearted and cartoony, but in one of the games, I think Chocobo's Mystery Dungeon 2 or something, uh, White Mage here is instead named Shiro, which is the Japanese word for white. So there you go, White Mage, Shiro. And White Mage in this game, she's got a magic carpet, and she has a barrier which allows her to block most attacks, so you won't be able to hit her with much. Uh, in this stage, she introduces the mini spell, which shrinks you, much like the lightning bolt from Mario Kart. Um, using a single mini spell will shrink your opponent one time, like, th like this, basically. If you use two mini spells, you'll shrink your opponent twice, and using three mini spells at once does that. And after having used three mini spells on you, you can actually be flattened by your opponents. And this actually leads to a hilarious part of the cutscene for this level, where Mog, uh, after White Mage introduces the mini spell, Mog basically says to her, So despite looking like a peaceful girl, you actually like to pick on little people. <laughs> and I always thought that was funny. Mog is based, even if he is a terrible racer. So yes, the mini spell will also slow down your movement, so if you've got a haste spell or a dash saved up, you can use that to negate the speed loss. You can see how slow that made me go just now. I have absolutely no idea how you're supposed to make any sort of target time in this level because it's completely random how many mini spells get used on you, or how many hate spells you pick up for that matter. So I really don't know if they, they actually intended for the, it to be possible to get 100 points on the scoring system. Uh, points actually do matter for something besides being a nice score, but you'll only see that at the very end of this video, so uh, you'll have to wait a little while for that. So apparently, White Mage in the Chocobo setting is one of the few actual humans which gets her a lot of, um, gets her a lot of, um, scorn for some reason, I don't know. I, I didn't play Chocobo's Dungeon 2 in full. I only looked up the plot once, and, um, yeah, I'm not actually not interested in playing a Mystery Dungeon game. Mystery Dungeon games are the bane of my existence for some reason, but it's possible that I just happen to pick the worst ones to play. Or not the worst of the worst, but, like, the, the annoying ones to play. 
So I don't exactly have much love for the genre. But anyways, now we're um yeah, I'll I'll give Chocobo's Mystery Dungeon a try, I guess, someday. Uh next up we have my favorite stage of the game, and I uh, hope you can imagine why that is as soon as you see it. So we are up against now a fat Chocobo, or just chubby Chocobo as the game calls him. Fat Chocobos have been seen a couple of times as part of the Chocobo Summon in Final Fantasy VII, and they apparently store your items in Final Fantasy III. I have no idea where, and I probably don't want to know. That's him in front of me right now. Uh, you can imagine why this is his stage, right? All the candy and the sweets and stuff. And this really rockin' jazz remix of the Chocobo theme, by the way. I really like it. Again, this is a great OST, and you should look it up. There are actually a bunch of songs for the cutscenes as well, and I haven't mentioned any of those because you won't hear them in this video. I'm skipping all the story scenes, sorry. Uh, anyways... I'm trying to remember what Fat Chocobo's ability is, and I, I'm i not getting it at all. Oh, it's Magic Plus, isn't it? No. Magic Plus is Black Mage's ability. I should explain what that does. Uh, when the ability meter uh, fills up all the way, Magic Plus will automatically upgrade one of your Magic Stones to the next level. Now, um, Fat Chocobo, what does he have? Oh, I know what he has. He has the Receive ability. Um, if his ability gauge is full, any magic stone used against him will be added to his inventory. So, that's pretty nice. Although, you can't really add any haste to your um, inventory that way, because haste isn't specifically used against you. The magic stone for this level is Reflect, which is interesting. When you pick it up, I've picked it up just now, as a matter of fact, just holding on to the Reflect spell will cause any magic stone that's used against you to automatically be negated. However, in this state, the stone can be stolen. Yeah, you just saw it reflect just now. Um, however, the stone can still be stolen from an enemy if they get up behind you or if Goblin uses the Mug ability. So, um, uh, you can actually activate the stone, in which case it will, f will, it will reflect everything for a short amount of time. However, if the duration runs out, then you've wasted the spell. Yeah, I think all this food is starting to make me hungry, by the way. Are we done with this yet? One more lap, okay. All the races are three laps. So if I missed anything up until now, I guess there's not much to talk about in this stage. There's a couple of annoying spots, and there's a mini shortcut here of sorts. You could use it to approach one of the lines of magic stones off to the left. You just saw it off out of the corner of your eye there. Uh, you could like pick up five stones at once if you wanted to, maybe risk taking a little bit of extra time to do so. Of course, all the stones would be randomized. You wouldn't be guaranteed a haste stone. And as you can see, I'm getting hit by blizzard magic over and over. So again, I don't really know if they really intend for anybody to get 100 points in this game, because I think that would be entirely luck-based. If it's based entirely on whatever your time is for each level, uh, I really don't know. There's not a lot of sources for info on this game because this is one of the games that you don't really need to break down and analyze the mechanics of. It's a Mario Kart clone. There's not much to say about it. Although, I have been talking about it for a very long time now. <laughs> so I guess that's the most contradictory statement ever. Uh, two more stages left in the main story. Oh, I haven't talked about the music either. The music for White Mage's stage is a remix of the credits for Final Fantasy V. Great track. And uh, this upcoming course, it has a remix of the boss theme from Final Fantasy 2. Like with the boss theme from Final Fantasy 3, it's a little bit different from its original track, but you can definitely hear the original tune if you listen for long enough. This apparently is the real Gurugu Volcano, even though the theme for Gurugu Volcano was used in a previous track. It's very strange. So at least the character we're up against is a little bit noteworthy. He is a behemoth, which is a common enemy in Final Fantasy games. And it appeared in Kingdom Hearts as well. So the Behemoth opponent, he has the quick, what is it called, the charge or rush ability. It makes him go faster and anybody he touches while he's going faster will be flattened, like with the mini spell that I mentioned. Um, it's not very useful because it's not much, it, it doesn't speed you up as much as the dash ability does. And as you've seen in these races so far, I've been way far ahead of my opponents in just about every race. So I really prefer to dash and speed forward even further. 
Right. So this this stage has a lot of hazards, by the way. Those falling rocks that can flatten you, the chances of them hitting is not very high. And you could also fall into the lava here, but also in one of the corridors coming up, I think. Oh, not here, actually. These are just basic turns. But shortly after this section, you have the walls coming up. And the thing about these walls is that they have very weird uh, physics to them. Uh, they are kind of sloped. Uh, these are the walls that I'm talking about, by the way. If you hit one, then you kind of go up and get pushed off the other side. If you touch these walls too much, they can really mess you up even more so than the regular walls. I mean, you don't have to make a whole lot of sharp turns about it, so I don't really know why I'm spending so many words on them. Ah yes, the magic spell introduced in this stage is the Doom spell. When you activate it, um, it starts a countdown, and after 10 seconds, the opponent who is affected by the Doom spell will just spin out instantly. Now, they can transfer the countdown to somebody else by bumping into them, but if you're way ahead like I am, then there's not much you can do. You can't slow down to stop somebody from... Uh, you can't slow down enough to touch someone and transfer the doom spell over to them that would take a very long time here's the doom spell as a matter of fact so if i slow down now i would be spending way more time than the spin out would cost me so i'm just going to take the spin out yet another annoying attack spell but the animation for it is a little funny all right so i should be able to speed out of here and then just a couple more turns and we will be on to the final course of the game I haven't really talked about the plot of Chocobo Racing because it's kind of silly, but um, I guess if I have if I have to talk about something in the final stage, then I might as well talk about that. Kind of weird for that little sign to be there. I don't know. I think that sign looked really out of place, but I guess it, I guess you do need something to warn the player to turn. So the final race of the game is against. Oh, by the way, in the actual story, there's a really neat cutscene. There's some animated cutscenes with some nice music. I, I already mentioned the nice music, but, you know, still worth seeing the cutscenes because they are animated just as well as any other Final Fantasy games animations from that era. So the nice FMVs are still really great. The final course of the game. It actually takes place in the world where all of the summonable creatures from Final Fantasy come from, and we're racing against none other than Bahamut, the King of Dragons himself. As you can see, he flies, so like with uh, White Mage and Black Mage, he can just avoid Blizzard spells that way. He doesn't need to flap his wings or anything. I really think it's amazing that all of the characters have unique vehicles to the point where one character just has no vehicle and uses his wings to fly through the stage. It's really nice. So I did mention that this stage is where all of the Final Fantasy summons come from. You can actually see quite a number of them if you look closely at the background graphics. Um, at the finish line, we saw Leviathan curled up around the uh, finish line. And in some sections, you can see, I guess, fairies. We just passed them. And there are carbuncles in this part of the stage. Here's a close-up of one of them. This is Carbuncle, the guy with a little gem in his head. And... I think that's Ramu who's making the lightning, and um, I think Ifrit and Shiva were in there as well. They're way out of the way. You would have to like stop racing and actually pay attention to the graphics in order to see them, but they're out there somewhere. So yeah, that's a really nice attention to detail. This stage actually has a really big super secret shortcut that cuts off a decent amount of the course. However, taking it is very risky. Uh, as you can see, there are a very low amount of guardrails compared to other tracks in the game, so falling off course would be um, a very big risk, and if you did fall off, it would be very detrimental to your time, so I'm going to avoid doing that. And what you saw just now was Bahamut's ability, Mega Flare. It just makes everybody spin out, as if we didn't need enough of those kinds of abilities between the Magic Stones and everything else. In fact, this very stage introduces the final Magic Stone, the Ultima spell, and it just causes everybody to spin out yet again. There are three levels of Ultima, and everyone will be out for longer depending on how big the spell was. I just use them immediately so that I can stop them from doing anything funny. Actually, uh, you notice the graphic for the racers at the top of the screen, they actually make a little head-bobbing animation whenever they use an ability or magic spell. So if you uh, hold onto Ultima in advance, you could just cause Bahamut to spin out by waiting for his little animation to go off 
and then you could use Ultima in order to stop him. Or does that... Is that only for magic spells, or does it work on abilities too? I'm not even sure now. But at any rate... Yeah, Bahamut actually managed to pass me because there are so many spells and abilities in play now that spinning out and falling off course can actually happen quite a lot. But yeah, I'm about to pass him up again. Goblin's minecart is actually really slow compared to some of the other racers. Its stats are not that good. But again, I wanted to stop him from using the mug ability against me, so playing as him stops him from doing that. But at any rate, I've just hit Bahamut with a doom spell, so he should be out in just a couple of seconds. And, um... Well, I guess he... Oh, there he goes. Or was that just him uh, hitting everybody else with something? I don't know. Uh, anyways, uh, that'll bring an end to this playthrough, but after we beat this course, there's actually one secret track and a secret character that can be unlocked, so I'm actually going to play a regular versus match against that character. In fact, there are actually a lot of secret characters if you continue beating story mode over and over again, but it would take a lot of... It's a bit of a grind to get all of them. I think there are like 10 characters to unlock. But after being story mode for the second time, you actually unlock a secret match against a secret racer, which I will talk about uh, after the reward that you get for collecting a bunch of points and being the game. So the points actually do something, as I mentioned. They actually allow you to customize a, a racer of your very own. You can pick one of the characters in the game and then add a bunch of bonus points to their stats. So I've got a score of 85. Okay, that's not bad. Uh, that means I can add 85 out of 100 bonus points, which is not much less than the maximum. So I didn't really know what kind of customization I wanted to do. You can also pick an alternate color, and I think Pink Bahamut is the best one, so I'm going to do that. So you can put points into maximum speed, acceleration, turning, drift, and the speed at which your ability gauge fills up. Um, Bahamut's ability gauge actually fills up very slowly because Mega Flare is a broken ability. Well, not super broken, but still uh, very powerful, so it has the slowest speed at which it fills up. So even with my ability gauge speed maxed, it would still take a while to fill up. Anyways, after you um, finish editing your parameters, you can name your racer and then save it to a memory card where you can use it in any other mode, including time trial, which uh, means that time trial records are probably beaten by somebody who has 100 points in this game. Again, I have no idea if that's ever been actually achieved. It's not like there's any competitive speedrunning for this game. I mean, there are there are story mode speedrunners, but I don't think anyone tracks times competitively. I just put in a random name, by the way. So after beating the second run of story mode, uh, you actually unlock a secret race with Squall from Final Fantasy VIII. Yeah, Final Fantasy VIII had just come out, and he has his own Final Fantasy VIII themed circuit. So here we go. And it has the Final Fantasy VIII normal battle theme as well. A really great track. And I actually like this remix a lot more than the original track. So I always have this on my MP3 player instead of the original. Anyways, Squall is meant to be a very overpowered racer. But of course, with my overpowered customized racer, I'm just going to speed past him and decimate him in this race. Now, Squall does have one ability that you really want to watch out for. Uh, it's a very overpowered ability. It is called Gunblade, after his weapon. It causes him to speed up until he takes first place, and while he is speeding up, anybody he passes by gets spun out instantly by the Gunblade. It's really overpowered and nice to have. It's basically... it, it would basically be the equivalent of a Mario Kart blue shell, but... He's not going to catch up to me at all. No matter how much speed he gets, my overpowered customized racer is going to win every time. I mean, it's not like this game is that hard at all. I mean, I don't think I've ever played Grand Prix mode on hard mode. Uh, in the Grand Prix mode, you can actually choose what courses to race on. So you could choose courses entirely favorable to you if you wanted. Uh, anyways... Other than that, there's not much else to say about this race. There's actually no obstacles or anything in this course, and you can't fall off the edge of the track because there's no pitfalls or anything. So I think it's worth talking about that there are actually a bunch of other races you can unlock if you continue beating story mode over and over again, including 
an 8-bit chocobo that has the sprite from the original NES uh, Final Fantasy, which is really funny and uh, interesting to play with. You can also unlock Cactar, you can unlock Moomba from Final Fantasy VIII, and you can even unlock Cloud Strife as well. I mean, they don't have any special graphics for them or anything. They're just like bonus characters, so they didn't get anything interesting to them. If you beat Grand Prix mode with any of the other characters, other than Squall and the secret characters, uh, you actually get this nice FMV of them winning the Grand Prix, which is really nice. There's a, there's actually quite a lot you can do in this game. But there's a relay race mode, there's a versus mode, there's a time trial mode, you can save time trial ghosts if you want. Really nice stuff. But yeah, that's gonna do it for this playthrough as soon as I cross the finish line. Um, yeah, that's Chocobo Racing, an interesting game from my childhood that turned out to be the first ever Final Fantasy game that I had ever played. Well, technically, anyways. And yeah, so I hope you, you enjoyed me indulging in this bit of history, and I'll see you for my next video, whatever it is. I've got some weird ideas planned. And I will jam out for a little while to this Final Fantasy Victory theme, and I'll see you guys next time.